You're watching Power Nation. Today on Music City Trucks. It's day one of building our new 1974 Bronco from the ground up, and we are rocking it. Smell that? It's a new car smell. <laughs> That's a new car smell? Yeah. Welcome to Music City Trucks. I'm Brandon Burke. And I'm Mark Christ. And we're very excited because we're getting back on our 1974 Bronco project. Now, last time we made the difficult decision to just build this truck from the ground up. And we're going to be doing that with this full custom chassis here. And of course, all new sheet metal like you see here on the floor, along with some other stuff that you don't even see yet. Now, if you missed our intro to the Bronco project, here's what we're going for. We're excited to call this project the Beach Cruiser Bronco. It's going to be the perfect blend of classic styling and modern technology that will be able to cruise the beach, scream down the interstate, and everything in between. Now, to achieve the level of build quality that we need to on this project, we need to up our game. Now, we could just MIG weld all of these components together, but there's a better way. And to show us that better way is Chad here with Caro Liner. Chad, thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me, Mark. And uh, tell me about this machine that you got here. This is Car Liner's CTR9 squeeze type spot resistance welder. It's uh, capable of 16,000 amps. It's gonna give that factory appearance and make your life a lot easier on this build. It has the most squeeze pressure and the most amperage on the market currently. And the ergonomics is what really makes this machine stand out. Being able to support the weight of the gun yep. on the telescopic arm, getting in any position comfortably mm -hmm. makes a world of difference. At the end of the day, the technician's not wore out. We're literally building this Bronco from the ground up. How is this machine going to help us accomplish our goal? Well, this is going to give you the rigid factory-like spot weld appearance on all the welds. It's going to make it a quality build, uh, and it's going to save a lot of time. Speaking my language. Yeah. So the machine starts with the calibration, and uh, we'll go ahead and do that by squeezing the trigger. Once the calibration is finished, it determines what arm is in place, and as we place different thicknesses in between it, it will measure and apply time, current, and pressure based on what's needed for that weld. So there's one panel it measured. Two panels, as you can see, the uh, thickness goes up along with the pressure. Three panels. We can see that the weld's starting to get bigger in circumference. And actually taking longer to weld the yeah, panel. I was going to say longer duration, too. Uh -huh. And it does that all on its own. It does that all on its own. We can also do single side welding, which we might need to use on the floor. Um, it's not really recommended for collision standards today with high strength steel, but on this Bronco, it was made with mild steel. We, we won't run into any problems there. So what do you mean uh, single side? Is that what? Yep. so just to where there's going to be certain times you can't get around, you can't get an arm around deep okay. enough into the panel. So we're thinking about the transmission tunnel here, the firewall. There's going to be places that we're not going to be able to get an arm around. Well, uh, let's, let's see what we've got as far as our truck goes and where we're starting and then we'll work the machine in. Yeah. Now, in order to build an entire Bronco body from parts, you need all the parts. Now, we said before that we ordered a bunch of new sheet metal from Dennis Carpenter, and we've got laid out here all of the structural steel that we ordered before we did the blasting, things that we thought we would need for sure, but we're obviously missing some things. But when you get ready to assemble a body, there's a place you start, and that is the front floor here, which consists of the inner rockers, the three front floor pans, and then three floor braces, which we didn't have. So we gave Dennis Carpenter a call and they said, well, we're going to hook you up. So they sent us this entire front floor assembly. Now they don't sell this like this. This actually came out of their department where they build entire Bronco tubs, which you can buy from them as well. Or you can just buy all the sheet metal parts from them and build it yourself. They sent us this just to save us some time. Now this is very important because four of the eight body mounts for the entire truck go through this assembly here. So once you get this bolted on, 
make sure it's square, make sure it's level, then you can build the rest of the truck. Now we've already done that, we're ready to start putting this thing together. This is exciting, huh? Yeah, I'm, I'm stoked. After getting the front floor mounted, we mount the rear brace to lay in the bed floor. So we just need to grind off this top coat here and we're ready to weld. Yep. Right on it. Square. And then you just open it up. Up. Like that. And open, open it up. Open it up. Hey, guys. Well, we're busy building a body for our 74 Bronco here, and we've made some pretty good headway so far. As you can see, we've got a little bit of extra help here. We've got two extra people. We've got Mark Coates from ABM Restorations, and we've got Steven Hamilton. He's a master fabricator, and both of those guys are from Kingsport, Tennessee. And we put them to work immediately, and of course, we got Brandon and Chad still plugging away on what they've got going on here. And we figured while we've got all this help, we need to get as much accomplished as possible. These panels fit really nicely, but there's always some trimming and grinding that needs to be done. Can you imagine replacing all of these pieces individually rather than just building them new? I, there's no way I would. Let's, let's let it down. Okay. Here, and flush it out, just talk right. about the With the floor pieces in place, we can move on to the quarters. Are you still working on that? No, we're good. All right, can you help me fit this tub again? Actually, let's pull it out. Okay. See what happens. Just looking at side to side, how the quarters fit and the wheel tubs, just to see. Just eyeballing it. After eyeballing all the panels, it's time to make sure they're square and prep for more welding. Don't get, don't get, don't, don't, don't get, don't get. Don't tempt, don't tempt me, because we'll build the whole back <laughs> of this thing. You guys ready for this? See it. <laughs> that fits so nice. Looks good. It looks like a truck. Oh, I I can't believe we got this far in one day, and we we could not have done it without your guys' help. So thank you. Yeah. Uh, so for us to start with a bare frame this morning, I mean, this was one day. Uh, this is amazing, and I really appreciate everybody's help. I know there was five of us, so that helps a lot. And I know you guys have to go, so. I guess it's time to, to send you guys off, but we really appreciate your help and we'll just pick it up from here. And I feel like we've got a great start, so. Yeah, we got a half Bronco. Yeah, we do. All right, let's get out of here, guys. Coming up next. This really gives you an appreciation for how simple these trucks are. Well, we're back here in the shop. We got the lights back on. It's a new day and we have Chad for a little longer. So let's put your skills to work with this amazing spot welder. Yeah, we're getting ready to weld some pretty thick material here, so let's put this thing to the test and see how it works. This back corner has five panels that meet, and the CTR9 has no problem fusing them all together. Okay, let's do that on the other side. That's in there. Get this bed side on. Or the, the... Yeah, get the, get the inner quarter and tail light. We want the build quality of our Bronco to be as nice as any early Bronco out there. And we're well on our way. So we've been using the C-Tongs to spot weld everything so far, but there's some spots now that we can't get with the clamp. Uh, what do we do about that? So the Carliner CTR9 has a multi-function gun kit that has a single side option. We'll set that up. Okay. How much pressure are you applying, Chad? Well, this is why it's not recommended for OEM repair in a body shop, because you can't give that adequate squeeze pressure. Right. With mild steel, we have different properties and characteristics, so we're able to use it on this. You just want to make sure that you're pushing against something that's solid. Um, so you're, you are applying a good bit of pressure and holding it still for a second until you get that instant of orange. That's what you're looking for, is that instant of orange simulating what you would have with the C-Tone. But the duration is pre-programmed. The duration so you don't have to is let go. No, you can hold the trigger. I, just because I'm holding the trigger, it's not initiating another weld. It'll only do it one time. Right. 
So there was one spot we couldn't get to because of a brace. So we uh, can yeah. plug this in anywhere. Yeah, so like in the floor, in the center of the floor? Yes. Where we couldn't reach in there, yeah. You just have to remember that you gotta press against something solid. I'm gonna say that the back of this truck's yeah. solid now. Uh, I know you gotta get going, Chad, so I just wanna say thank you for bringing the machine and showing us everything it'll do. Hey man, I appreciate the opportunity to work with you guys and get to show you the Carliner CTR9. This will definitely let this build stand apart for structural integrity. Well, that's what we're going for. I'm not gonna lie, I think I'm getting the hang of this thing. Does it look good? This really gives you an appreciation for how simple these trucks are. The guys at Dennis Carpenter really stepped up for us and this Bronco is coming together incredibly well. Oh yeah. Okay, that goes like that. So that just gets sandwiched. Yep, and just then we leave sandwiched like that. There, okay. All right. Oh yeah, I like that. Still a little flimsy. Yeah, it'll get there. What do we want to do next? Let's throw some measurements and make sure our door openings are correct. Should be 35 and 7 sixteenths. Yeah, it's 30, right at 35 and a half. We'll be able to scoot it closer, you know. 35, yes, yeah, this was 35 and 5 eighths. So, it's too much. That confirms that we need to go backwards with this. Up next, Brandon gets comfortable. Yeah. Now, as you can see, we got a bunch more panels clamped into place like the cowl and door. And that's because we got the quarter fully welded in and this is our starting point. So we got our nice door gap that we want. Now we can build the rest of the truck forward. But this is where panel fitment comes into place. It's a bunch of two steps forward, three steps back, moving things by eighth of an inch, sixteenth of an inch. Because if you take your time and get those panel gaps right, all those body lines, make sure everything's square, you can have a really nice product at the end. Speaking of which, you'll notice the firewall pieces are not in right now because we tried to fit them and they didn't fit exactly the way we wanted them to. So we fit the panels that we could and that would be the cowl side pieces and the cowl upper as well as the windshield mount here. So we've got those clamped in and that'll allow us to hang this other door as well. Then we can go back and fit the firewall pieces to the cowl and then eventually weld everything up. We also have Stephen Hamilton back here in the shop it's always a good idea to have an extra set of hands, and I think between the three of us, we'll be able to knock this tub out. Yep, we're gonna have us a Bronco. Well. Oh, we're right there, Brandon. All right, if you can get those, we're there. It's gonna fit first time, watch. I don't know about that. Ooh, that's not bad. Yeah, the body line goes uphill from the rear to the front, yeah. so the hinges need to come down. Well, well, the bottom hinge needs to get kicked in because you can see I got okay. almost three fingers before we get to this okay. post. So kick the bottom in. And then and we'll then bring the whole cow down. Drop the whole cow down. All right. Go ahead and move it where you want it to be. Let me watch just this see, side. Just see that side? Uh, it kicks it way out. Mm. Yeah, when you push that one where it needs to be, this one kicks out. That's fine right there? Yeah. That's where it's happy. Pretty happy? That's yeah. pretty good right How there. does that body line look, Steven? I'm it's okay. kind of in your way. It it's okay, it needs good. to come out. But well, I'm pushing now in. We're, now mm. we're running into the problem, we're getting a lot of leverage on the... Mm -hmm. Fire yeah, wall. well I'm pushing in here and pulling out here and I can feel it moving yeah, a lot. It's, it's twisting the whole unit. So what do we need to do um, then? Do we just need to stop here and let's get that other side the same way? And then we can stick that firewall in there. Okay. Check it. Do the next step. All right, Steven, what'd you end up doing with this firewall? Well, I started out massaging the middle panels and started clecoing all the panels together to where we can test fit it. And it looks a lot better than it did when I was Oh yeah, with it. absolutely. I think we're ready to go to the Bronco. Oh, cool. Yeah, let's fit this thing. 
Awesome. They got the doors kind of mocked in place. Oh, it's pretty good over here. It's fitting good here. Dang, this this is almost flush up against here. Let's just self tapper the bottom. All right. After Steven worked his magic on the firewall pieces, we got it all clamped in so we could finalize the door fitment. That's not bad. We can just open that hole up if we need to on the fender because the yeah, fender right. looks like it fits pretty nice. All right, what's the over under on this? Moment of truth. Okay, let me get my fingers out of there. Seems pretty solid. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Look at that. How's your gap? Looks good. That's a good 3 16ths right there. Same as the other side. Oh, that body line down there is straight as an arrow. Look right through here? Yep. All right. There. I'm not hating it. Got a nice gap over here right now. My gap's great. Somewhere in there? Yeah, that's fine. Look at this. Yeah. Well, now that we know that the panels are pretty close to fitting, I say burn most of it in, get the windshield on it, and get the top on it, and we'll have a complete truck. So tear down the bolt-on stuff that we just did. Yeah. Do a bunch of welding. Yeah. Build it back up. Like it. Up next, with lots of help, we finish round one. Can't believe you guys put a whole Bronco together. Well, we've been busy doing a bunch of welding on our Bronco here. We've got the A pillars welded in completely along with a bunch of other structural stuff. We don't have the firewall and cowl completely welded in yet, but we can get to that later. Yeah, we have enough of the truck welded together that is structurally sound. So while we still have Steven, we're gonna hang all that new sheet metal, including that top. Start with the doors. Hopefully it goes as easy as the first time. Uh, you mean the 10th time? I mean, I'm gonna go almost snug with two of them and then we'll put it on the scribe line. All right. Pick it up just a little bit. We're pros at this now. <laughs> Next thing is get the other door hung and then these fenders. We'll repeat the same thing on the passenger side and make sure the door is hung properly and the body lines are nice. Mm. Let's get these fenders on. All this sheet metal fits surprisingly well together. Can you go over and fix that? Yeah. Even though we don't need to bolt on the front clip right now, it's important for ensuring all of our body lines are perfect before we final weld everything. And let's snug them. Yeah. Yeah, because it's otherwise it's gonna sag. This is a good day. I need to get in there then. Very exciting. Looks good over here. A little tight against the grill here on this side. Probably just needs to be shimmed out. Yeah. Yeah. This side. I think for now that's... That's not bad. It's fitting good. Let's get a top on it. Let's do it. Before we put the top on, we need to get that windshield frame installed. Then we can get the top side panel pieces clamped in. And just for aesthetics, we're throwing the outer quarters on. All right, clamp. You like it? Yeah. Is that gonna hold up? That'll hold oh, up. Oh, yeah. All right, clamp it. I can smell the beach already, you know? Be cruising right along. So what's next now? Uh, the top. So the roof. Get... Well, we've created some help. Mm. Oh, I'm here. This is like the cherry on top. <laughs> that's, that's legitimate, right? Literally the cherry Literally. on top. Literally. That is by far the heaviest piece, too. It is. 
Oh, it's beefier than the factory one, for sure. I still can't believe you guys put a whole Bronco together. This is craziness. Keep going forward. Four. There it is. Oh, that comes in. Look at that. Dude, you're sitting in it. Dude. <laughs> you're sitting in it. Smell that? It's a new car smell. <laughs> That's a new car smell. When we started this, when we put the first piece of sheet metal on here, I did not see us being this far this soon. N no. <laughs> and I'll, I have to thank Steven and all the help we had. This thing wouldn't have came together as fast as it did if, if we didn't have this awesome team. Yeah, so. and that amazing machine. Yeah. And the right sheet metal. And the machine. <laughs> and that machine. I mean, everything <laughs> came together the way it's supposed to. And I mean, just look at the finished product. It speaks for itself. Yeah, a brand new 74 Bronco with no rust. I didn't think we would be doing this, but here we are. Yeah. Next time you see our Bronco, we've got a bunch of cool stuff to show you, including a brand new Edelbrock crate engine, some sweet kicks, a transmission, transfer case, axles, and a special guest to give us his opinion on our build. You don't want to miss it. If you can't get enough of our Bronco, go to PowerNationTV.com and check out our Beach Cruiser Bronco project page. We have current build status, before and after pics, links to parts used, and all the episodes right there on one page.